For our last example in this section, uh, what I'm going to tell you example to actually it's not the last one, but 8-12. Uh, I'm skipping the one with the two um, discs together because I think that'll be much more entertaining to deal with with um, angular momentum when we get there here quite quick. Um, what I will tell you is at the bottom option number D says what is the kinetic energy? Well we haven't gotten to energy yet so we're not going to answer question D. So let's see see what it says. It says that a 40 newton uh, 40 newtons is applied tangentially to a wheel at r equals 0.2 meters. And it gives us this i. And it wants to know what is the angular acceleration. So now let's remind ourselves that a net torque, torque net, equals i alpha. So what it's telling us here is that it's been applied tangentially. So this is perpendicular to, so that sine theta thing it doesn't matter. It's sine of 90, so it's going to give us one. And then it says to a wheel at r equals two. So the force is being applied at this point two meters. That's not the radius of the wheel. That is where the force is being applied. We've been given the i, so I don't need the radius of the wheel. So let's see, I have my 40 newtons. 40 newtons equals my 30 kilograms times, oh, 40 newtons, I forgot my distance. Woo, 40 newtons applied at 0.2 meters. So remember, torque is F R sine theta. Cool. So 30 kilograms, and we want alpha. So 0.2 times 40 divided by 30, and that gives me my alpha of 0.27, that's a two, seven radians per second squared. So I've answered that first part. That's alpha. Let's see, we want omega at t equals four. So I know my initial omega is zero. I have my alpha. So let's think of some of the equations that we have for that. I have omega final squared equals omega naught squared plus two a two alpha delta theta. I also have something that looks like, let's see, theta, my change in theta equals omega naught t. So my initial velocity plus one half alpha time squared. Now look at this, bada bing. Let's see, I have time and omega naught is zero. So my change in theta, the amount of radians I'm gonna go through is gonna be my one half. We just figured this out, 0.27 radians per second squared times time squared times four squared. So the amount of radians I go through is this 2.2 radians. And that's it. That's all I was asked for. Oh, no, it asked for revolutions, not just radians. So I have, I have radians. So how do I turn that into revolutions? Well, remember, remember, if I go one time around, one trip around is two pi radians. So if I have my amount of radians, if I divide by two pi, well, that gives me how many, um, how much of the circle I covered. So let's see, I have 2.2 .2 radians, radians, sorry, times, and one revolution, one revolution in two pi radians. So that gives me this 0.34 revolutions or rotations, however you want to say that. So let's think about this again. So one trip around is two pi radians. I have the amount of radians. So this is how much, how far around did it actually go? So it only went 0.34 revolutions. It didn't even make one, one entire turn. And there you have it. 
So now we've done everything with torque and rotation, and our next thing is momentum.